Updated with more details, the jury in Anthony Rapp's $40 million sexual misconduct lawsuit against Kevin Spacey has found the two-time Oscar winner not liable for damages today. They had deliberated for only an hour plus, after eight days of testimony. As the verdict was read, a face-masked Spacey lowered his head and then appeared to wipe away tears. Moments later, he stood, turned and exchanged hugs with his lawyers and then his manager, Evan Lowenstein. Rapp, seated with his attorneys, stared straight ahead. Addressing a crowd outside the Manhattan courtroom, Rapp lawyer Richard Steigman said, The jury spoke. Anthony told his truth. We respect the jury's verdict, but it doesn't change his truth. Later, Spacey attorney Jennifer Keller told the crowd, This was a highly intelligent, highly educated jury, I think 11 of the 12 were college grads. Most had graduate degrees. They're very, very bright people, and they could see right through this. She added, Mr. Spacey is deeply grateful for the jury system and for this jury in particular. For his part, Spacey simply walked past the throng and crawled into a waiting SUV without offering any comment. Jurors had spent a combined three hours today listening to the side's attorneys give their closing arguments. The prosecution summarized its case first, with Steigman telling jurors that his client told the truth, consistently over time, about being sexually assaulted by the Oscar-winning actor in 1986 even when that truth was messy and didn't always help his case. He said Spacey's only defense at trial was to accuse Rapp of carrying on a 35-year crusade against a fellow actor based on a lie that has had conveniently shifting motives over the years, from romantic jealousy to professional envy to gay rage to self-promotion, none of which Spacey's lawyers have. Saying Rapp cooked up that lie out of thin air was, in Steigman's words, a defense to a lawsuit, nothing more and nothing less. Because if you're going to call a guy a liar, then you've got to give him a motive. In her closing argument, Keller hammered away at the contradicting recollections of Rapp and Spacey, saying the gist of the Star Trek, Discovery actor's allegations are due to his 35-year vendetta against the defendant. There is no evidence that this, sexual misconduct, took place, Keller said, and plenty of evidence that it didn't. Keller began her closing statement by showing jurors a photo of the studio apartment that Spacey occupied in 1986. She emphasized, as Spacey's lawyers had throughout the trial, that there was no separate bedroom. Rapp has said that before Spacey came on to him, he was watching television away from the party and that at one point he looked through a crack in the bedroom door and noticed that all the party guests had left. His story depends on the existence of a bedroom, Keller said. That's the stubborn fact the plaintiff cannot get away from.